Well, hello, and welcome to the Fisher Poetry Podcast, a showcase of prose, poetry, and song written and performed by those in the commercial fishing community, mostly. I'm your host, Brad. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we are happy to be bringing you another installment of Sunday at Sea, a live show of maritime songs, stories, and good coastal fellowship hosted by Mark Allen Lovewell and Molly Canole from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. So, without further ado, here's their show. All right. All right now we know it's four o'clock. I think. We might as well start. Let's do it. This is fun. Here we Here go. We go. everyone or good afternoon <laughs> wherever you are good something we're here <laughs> and we're, we saw some hearts i saw some hearts going we're see some hearts coming yeah, up yeah there's folks with us welcome to our Thank show you. live from the west coast my name's mark allen lovewell i'm a folk singer from the island of martha's vineyard and seated right next to me mm -hmm. is molly canole we're uh both from both here, out here in California. Yeah, we, we got Claire can hear us all the way back home. Claire and her mom. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks for joining us. Please comment. Let Please us know if you can hear us okay, you. whatever, because we're paying attention. <laughs> we're paying attention. This is, this is an amazing event we've been through. We and get... it's wonderful to have another event on the West Coast. Here we are traveling and you never know when you're traveling if it's all going to come out all right, but thank you so much for being here with us. It's wonderful. And last Sunday was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Was so last fun. Sunday was was a treasured moment in our a great memory in our lives. Hey Joanne, how you doing? <laughs> Joanne was there too. Yay. <laughs> What you looking for? Here it is. Oh, I'm okay. looking for my harmonica. Oh, oh there you go. Hey, so, Dan's uh, here too. Yay. Oh, boy, Dan says, come back soon. We got pickle tinks. <gasps> Spring is happening while we're away. Pickle oh, tinks. Wow. For those of you who don't know what pickle tinks are, it's a, it's an island name. I don't know if it it's goes enough. further than the island, but it's definitely an island name for those little teeny tiny baby frogs that just come out in the springtime. It's a sure sign of spring. And boy, they can make a lot of noise for teeny tiny little frogs, can't they? It's such a great, it's like a chorus. It's a beautiful chorus. We'd love to hear them. So here's, so we've had an amazing week here. We've had, you know, here in California. Uh, a few days ago, we went and saw an amazing vessel, the Western Flyer. The Western Flyer is a, is a uh, piece of, a, of our literature, a piece of our English American literature. Uh, John Steinbeck, whom we all love, and, mm -hmm. you know, wrote Grapes of Wrath and whatever, uh, had a had a love for the sea, and and of course he wrote Cannery Row, which is an amazing story, uh, and 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 he also owned this vessel called Western Flyer, and she went into disrepair, and there's a long story about her troubles and 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 her. And like a phoenix, her resurrection. And Molly and I had an opportunity to get a tour of that vessel 
in Moss resurrected. Landing. Oh my goodness, such a Moss beautiful Landing. restoration. Moss Landing, which is really, it's sort of like, for those on the East Coast, it's about as close as you can get to a Menemsha kind of a quality thinking. Uh, but it's a big, it's a big harbor. Like a it, cross between Menemsha and Woods Hole, because it's got a lot of uh, research going on there too. Which a lot is cool. of research uh, institutions that involved in there. There's a vessel called the Rachel Carson, and you know about her. Anyhow, so we had this tour of this, uh, of this amazing vessel, and I urge you and encourage you to look her up. And, and, and I, you know, I'm obviously, we'll put something in the newsletter coming up about that visit, but it was heartening. It was enormously heartening to see uh, all of these things coming together to make that vessel well. There's so much trouble out on the waterfront, struggles and difficulties and challenges, and this is a, this is a flagship of, of happiness and joy for those uh, for those who are committed to, you know, research, ocean research, committed to res maintaining the history and heritage of our, of John Steinbeck, and uh, yeah. and so we took a full tour. And if you were watching us, our our feed on uh, Facebook, you saw we posted a, a whole photo essay of it. We have a, a huge thank you to all those involved in allowing us to take that tour. Absolutely, it was it was really a remarkable remarkable story and place to just be right in there it was and, amazing and and to take the tour with family you know my yeah. son my son alan lovewell who runs yes, this amazing amazing business just down the street from her uh, yeah. real good fish and it is real good <laughs> and it is real good they ship uh they they ship seafood all around the country and uh, both molly and i are subscribers and we get <laughs> we get fresh fish shipped to us on a regular basis so it was it's, right it's, from there so it's, fun. Been, it's been an amazing week it really and, has been and today we were just out on moss landing again <laughs> standing on the beach and that's right and what did we see when we were on the beach? molly what did you see <laughs> we saw a whale no kidding and it was alive it was it was a spout and then there was a whale So you, so you know, I mean, if you follow us, we love whales. We're, we're, <laughs> we're always looking for the whale. <laughs> whale. The whale stories of our nation, the whale stories of this world, are our stories, and, we, and they're and and the tragedies of it, and the good news about it, and their so efforts. We love and, to see them out there swimming in the ocean where they should be. And here on the west day. coast, there's major efforts to restore the gray whale. Now, for those of us on the East Coast, we have no gray whales. We lost them. They were wiped out, wiped out from the surface of the earth. But they got gray whales in abundance. I want to say abundance. I may be overstating it, but there are a lot of gray whales near They've the shore. They've done well with their cautionary So we suspect that's sort of what Molly saw. Yeah. So we're going to, we'll do this song to everyone. Loves. Oh, yeah. This is a great whale one. And, and the best part is Molly provides fiddle music. I'm going to try a fiddle in this one. It'll be fun. Stood 
on the quarter deck. What a fine old man was he. Overhaul, overhaul, let your diamond tackles fall. With the men aboard And the whale was in full view Resolved was each a sailor boat To sail where the whale fishes Such a good time, and we had a uh, great time. You know, I mean, I'm just like I gotta see what we're doing. All right, here we go. I'm just looking at what we gotta do next. All right. I just love to see the the little guys' reactions. They had never been there before. The little two year old twins, and it was just so sweet to see the nor normally more boisterous and outgoing one was like quiet and in awe 
of these giant animals now I, right by, right? Yeah. And you know, there are parents out there, right? Your yeah. parents out there, please comment. I, you know, I'd like you to comment. Yeah, Let yeah. us know we got parents out there. You know what it's like with little munchkins that are two years old, one year old, whatever like that. Their attention span is like to fly. You know, it just flies all over the place. But what was so cool, what was so terrific for all of us, grown-ups and young people as well, I, was to watch the kids be sharp, focused. Oh, yeah on the movement of the fish in the aquarium. It is such a treat to see that connection. They get it. They, they, they may not be able to pronounce the word aquarium. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> They're getting there. They're getting there. They don't, it take them as long as they want to That's learn right. how to pronounce it, as long as they know what to do when they're standing there. And they were focused. Self-focused, and it was cool. Like I was saying about about um, how, how the little girl who's very very outspoken most of the time, she was like stunned into like odd silence, which was so cool to see that reaction in her. And the little boy who's maybe a little quieter, he was like every every five seconds, wow, <laughs> that was his favorite word, wow. <laughs> And then, and then their big brother was just running like like he was so comfortable in this place that he's been to before. Like he was the tour guide; he was showing us everything and just loving everything, wanting to just just go see and, and every I, part of it. And I'm, I'm sure many of you already know that this this West Coast here has been uh, getting lots of rain, lots and lots of rain. Yeah. And if you drive inland, the Sierra Nevadas have got feet of snow on the ground just from these passing storms that have been coming along all week. Well, for me, for us on vacation, this is family time. This is time to spend time with the family. So, And luckily, we're not up in the mountains. That and we're, we're not up in that. the mountains. So we're we're just getting seeing, a little rain, and just this, not the snow. And crazy. this morning, my, my, son and his, my son and my grandson went out and took out the rain gauge to find out how much had fallen in the last week. An amazing amount of rainfall for this community that only a few years ago was dealing with drought. They had four and a half inches of rain. <laughs> it was a record for in their In the collection. last week, <laughs> and uh, no, we're not. We all the roads are intact around here, and we're we're fine. There's a lot we're, of green. A lot we're fine. Of green a lot of green. Everywhere. But I, I, I the, the the story of California is it's ongoing. It's, it doesn't stop. It keeps moving. You know, you could sit in New England from one year to the next, and it's pretty routine. But in California, they there it's it's there's stories all the time. And now we I, have some requests from back home. When we come back to the East Coast, Dan would please like us to bring back a pair of gray whales. No problem. No problem. The carry on rules have they've changed. I'm sure we can we can manage that. <laughs> Is that Dan Waters? Yes! Oh, Dan, That's you're perfect. awesome. You're fun. Perfect. We got Carol's here, Carol and John. Hey, guys. I want to answer his comment about gray whales, though. I want you to know that there's been studies and discussions and talk among scientists and whale lovers about the idea of would it be possible? Now, I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying that people <laughs> recognize the significance that the Atlantic Ocean does not have any gray whales. They were wiped out by us, humans. And there's been discussion about, well, could we, should we, might we reintroduce the gray whale? Now, here's the story, because this is deep and down, down in who we are. It's the right whale we all know is having a really hard time. And there are only like 350, 340 of them left, okay? So the 340 in the ocean, swimming around, it just, it makes it even more imperative that we save them, to keep them going, because they and the gray whale are like buddies. They swam the shores, shorelines of New England like friends. Right whales and gray whales got along. Yeah. They swam close to shore. And of course, they're vulnerable, more vulnerable than the humpback, which swims anywhere in the ocean, and the sperm whales out there, they're all fragile. but. Anyhow, the scoop is, thanks Dan for bringing it up, I just, I am a big advocate of trying to make 
the ocean safe for all fish, more fish. We want more fish in the ocean. We want more fish right. in the ocean because that means there's more fishermen to fish on them. If you're squandering them and there are only a few fish in the ocean, no matter what you do, you can't save the fishermen. That's right. Hey, now I've got some more hellos to say because we got Over. a lot of people here. I already said hello to a few. We got bookies here. Oh, Woo! Yay, we got my bookie. cousin Sarah's here. We got Susan Gephardt from up north. Oh, Woo! she Ooh, was left. Susan Gephardt was a star. She helped us out. We got when, Brad here. Woo! We got Brad was he. Oh. Fisher Poets Archive, yay! Fisher Poetry Archive. I say, it, I gotta say it right. You guys look it up. There's podcasts of all kinds of good stuff there. We got Carol and John, and we got, oh, it's so fun. Cindy's here, too. Yay! Thank you, everybody. Connie, yay! Thank you, guys. Well, let's, Thanks let's for joining us. Let's just sneak this tune in. Let's sneak this fun one. Speaking about sailors. amazing trip and, yeah and only in a few days we'll be home and uh, yeah. it's been an amazing journey and I, I've said this already it's a journey of great fellowship with fellow people concerned about the ocean fellow people concerned about fishing and yeah. it really is a universal something there and and if you tap into it as a creative soul you're a poet or a writer or an artist, a painter. How many times have you seen a painting of a fishing boat on the side, on, on the wall? And I gotta give another shout out to Brad and his Fisher Poetry Archive because the stories and the songs and the wonderful tales we heard of the ocean and making a living and working hard on the ocean Many, many, many of those performances were recorded by Brad and his wonderful team, and those are going to be posted on the Fisher Poetry Archive. So look it up. It's a it's a dot com, FisherPoetryArchive.com, and you'll find all kinds of wonderful, wonderful, gripping stories and funny, you know, all over the map as far as emotional content, but really wonderful, wonderful tales and. Uh, great artistry behind all of those. So yeah, can up. I add to that? Can I add to that? Because what Brad was doing last weekend was recording the voices of all of the all of performers, storytellers. And the idea is that that weekend was a fleeting moment in the history of so many people's lives. It came and it went. Yeah. And the door shut as it ended. It was over. And they cleared it up, and they picked up all of this stuff, and they put everything away. What's so remarkable, what is so incredibly important, 
is that those stories were recorded, and Brad has them. Brad has them as part of the, is a volunteer who does this, you know. And that's, that's incredibly we wonderful. We love you too, Brad. <laughs> so that means that the listeners, the listeners that will listen to the show go far beyond days, months, years later. Even right. when Brad and I are gone. The stories will live on and the they're, stories worth, will they're worth it. Because this is a fragile moment in the history of the waterfront. I don't think there's anyone out there who would disagree with me on that. The stories are precious. They're gold. They're platinum. You can't put a price to them because we're struggling to try and figure out ways to have it, have it all. And we deserve to have it all. We deserve to have it all. But it's hard. Yeah, the fisheries are facing a lot of challenges. So you hear that in the stories too. It's a, so they're, they're really wonderful, wonderful tales. So we can't recommend looking those up strongly enough. This is a song about, well, well life being good. hard on the sea. Here we are. Yeah, right? All right, this is harmonica too, right? Oh, yeah. I think the D. Yep, the D. One. Yep, this is my right, song, Waterman's Journey. Oh, you got to tell them the story. That's right. Well, well, this was a challenge. He, he gave me a challenge about writing a, a song similar to it. An Irish blessing song that I wrote that's on our home album and something for the, for the specifically for the waterfront specifically for the for the working fishermen and, and stuff and I was like what a good idea so one night three o'clock in the morning not too long after that okay here it comes <laughs> the birthing really of a was. song get up and pay attention here it is. If you, any, any one of you out there are creative, you know the muse. <laughs> it's the muse. And the muse has an opinion That's on, right. on when, to, when to help you out and create something new. And you're not in charge of that. You are not in the muse. It's like, it's just a free... It just comes and goes. Or it doesn't come. You know, you, you, can, know. You, can dink, you can light candles for the muse. You can serve <laughs> special dinner table plate for the muse. <laughs> You'll get stood up. Yeah, you just never know. You just never know. So when 3 o'clock in the morning comes by and all of a sudden it's overflowing with all the juices of a story and all of the meat and all of the vegetables that go together with a... you got to pay go attention or you're not going to oh, get it. That's right. So here we go. That's right. Well, I'm not finished oh, this song. Oh, boy. <laughs> so anyhow, so... The idea is there aren't many songs around that celebrate that fragile relationship that loved ones have with their family members who go to sea. We care about those who go to sea every day. We care about the Coast Guardsmen who go out to rescue vessels. We care about the sailors who go alone or sailing around the world. We care about the fisherman who takes his boats out and waves like we saw today and we saw them. And so there's, there's, this is a song Molly wrote to share the fellowship of how we care about those people. Is that right? Yeah.
us sink and bring us home once again. Oh, the bounty of the sea is as fickle as can be. But we chase it guided by your steady hand. Help us find the fish we seek just enough to last the week. of the song is almost as long as the song. <laughs> but it's a great song. Hey, that uh, gave us time for more people to look, join us. We got Rachel Lovewell joined us. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Rachel. <laughs> David Grundin's here too. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you all for joining us. And all those who aren't even speaking up, we know you're there. And we're, we're very happy that you're here with us too. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. And please share. You know, and please share. You know, get, you you get. That's right. And speaking of have, sharing, Brad shared the Fisher Poetry Archive dot com. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh man, awesome. uh, there's such wonderful people on the West Coast. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're gonna miss leaving this place. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm I mean, so, we so love empowering. our wonderful ocean home on the East Coast. We love it. But it's lovely here too, and it's we're very lucky that we get to visit. Here and we'll too. tell you more stories as we, you know, we gather again in the weeks ahead because I think some of the residents. I mean, we are, we left. We're leaving here with a barrel overflowing. <laughs> That's right. We're leaving here with a barrel overflowing. Can I say that one more time? There's such the barrel overflowing. <laughs> There's great energy out here. There's terrific energy out here, and uh, it's been wonderful to be driving around in this. And for those of my friends too. on the East Coast, no, I'm not leaving the East Coast. I'm an East Coaster, <laughs> but the idea is that I need, you know, I need this. I need to be out here. I need to be charged. I get the batteries going. That's beautiful. It is really See, good. Family. And, and that's and, a priceless. Thing. And I, you know, I love the Pacific Ocean. I, I, the Pacific Ocean makes the Atlantic Ocean seem like a pond. I know I won't offend anybody, but I, hey, you know, 
I mean, I know we got the Atlanta, we've got hurricanes this and hurricanes that. But I just, this weather system that is hitting us right here on the West Coast isn't just hitting us like a hurricane hits for one day and goes on. This storm is just circulating, circling, you know, spinning its top in the Pacific Ocean, sending, sending clouds over here, and some of those clouds don't carry anything. Mm -hmm. And there may be blue sky in a minute. But some of those rain clouds come over and they dump. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's like really a truckload. You know, they come and they dump. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was pretty unusual for the West Coast to hear thunder. They don't get thunder like we get it on the East Coast. But there's st this storm is huge. And if you Google and look over what's going on in the Sierra Nevadas and Truckee, they're getting feet five feet of snow and it keeps falling. Well, we're down here by the coast, we're by the coast, we just get hit by these showers and uh, it's, and it's just, very green and, and it's very lush, the gardens and the crops, there's all kinds of places around here where they're growing things and we've got the raspberries starting and the strawberries and the avocados and it's really lush. It's lush and, and lush. I was here a few years ago when my son got married here, we were out there and there was the, the, the place where they were going to have the wedding ceremony reception, they had to not do it because there had been a fire. It, it was so dry. It was so dry. And now it's lush. It's it's lush. So, we are, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself from earlier in the show, but the, but the Pacific Ocean is responsible. <laughs> the Pacific Ocean is the big brother that overlooks everything and says, hmm, I think I'm going to dump a pile of rain on these folks or whatever. And these... And, and of course, there's so many surfers out here because... We saw a couple today and it was oh. overcast and cold, but they were out there. They were trying their best. So we saw, we've seen a lot of sea lions and, and a, lot of, a lot of birds, waterfowl. We saw pelicans flying today. It's just, it's a different, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, rich waterfront experience. Hey, Mark Winters is here too. Hey, nice to see you. And you're on vacation too, Mark Winters. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Win Thanks for joining Mark us. Mark Winters is a wonderful man. He's the minister <laughs> of the Federated Church, and he's among those responsible for our concerts that we gave last summer and at, at the Federated time. Church. Every Christmas week. at sea too. <laughs> and we're talking. We got ideas about next summer. We have, you know, we get home. We got, we got things to do. And. Uh, <laughs> But anyhow, the good news is that we get another one of Molly's wonderful tunes, and and, uh, and you're going to love this one. This is, can I introduce it? It's called... You go for it. It's Home Again. And it's that feeling that you have, that presence you have when you're in a place that feels like home. And in the case of this song, it's being on a boat. It's on being on the deck. Sometimes. Of the boat. Sometimes it's other places. It's other places too, but you... You mentioned it at the first line That's of the song. Right. You mentioned mm -hmm. it. So, and for those of us who are boaters, you know, this, this feeds us because there are times when you're out on your own boat. And that feels like home. And it feels like home. And then there's other verses that talk about other ways and places we feel at home too. So that's get, kind of the journey so of I'm this gonna song. So I'm going to lighten up on the guitar so you can hear the words to this song. <laughs> That was good. Ooh, let's play it in that key. <laughs> the key oh. of Q. <laughs> All right. All right.
Wow, thank you everyone for joining with us. Thank you, thank you. Really, thank you. Uh, <laughs> We've and I guess, I guess after singing all about home, there's only one song that can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I need a cape over that. Let's get that cape. Oh, we gotta have that song. We gotta so, get ready to re roll it home. Thank you everyone for joining with us. This is great. This is terrific. Um, it's so cool because no matter where we are, we put on a show, we have our friends show up. It's so Isn't cool. That fun? It's, it's so, nice. so terrific. It's yeah. you're loyal. You folks are loyal. <laughs> Alright, so we'll next be home week. next we'll be Sunday. Home. Next we'll be home week. next Sunday and we'll have our show. And we look forward to seeing you then. And yeah. uh, we've got a newsletter we're going to put together, which will have a lot of what goes on. If you want to get the newsletter, go to our websites. We've got links there and you can get Just on our Sign up for that free. It doesn't cost anything. You get it for free. We, know, so we don't sell emails or. Who has time for that stuff? <laughs> <But> seriously. <laughs> certain people we got to say thank you to our sponsors our patreon supporters we got to say thank you to our broadcasters including where you can find us facebook live youtube which is an after the fact thing brad helps us edit something and we post it on mark allen lovewell's youtube channel also you can find us on the fisher poetry archive and the link is right here in the in there we also are on tv local cable access tv mvtv on martha's vineyard and ccm in salem oregon and we're really grateful for all of those audiences we there's people that are our audience members that we never can shout out to say hello because we don't know you're there we don't know your names but we know you're there because you'll find us you'll send us an email or you're, you'll you'll you know, look us up on our website to say hello, or, or all of those things. We, we just find out that you're watching, and thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and there's wonderful. this ongoing conversation that goes on from week to week that goes on between you and us. And yeah. I want you to know, you know it's an open door, open window, open panel, whatever, open. So we thank welcome you. you. Yeah, thanks for just And we feel welcomed us. by you, so. Yeah.
much fun with this crowd. I know. Thank you all of you for posting comments. Thank you for sharing with us. We love you. We love you all. Many thousands. was Sunday at Sea, hosted by Mark Allen Lovewell and Molly Canole of Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Thank you, Mark and Molly. It was a real pleasure to have you on the show today. For more information about Sunday at Sea, please check out the link included in the podcast description. Well, that's it. This one's in the tote. The Fisher Poetry Podcast is written and produced by me, Brad Wortman. Music used in this episode is courtesy of Mark Allen Lovewell and Molly Canole. We're always looking for Fisher poets like Mark and Molly to come on the show. If you'd like to appear or have comments about the show, please send an email to the Fisher Poetry Podcast at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to haul the latest episodes into your net. The Fisher Poetry Podcast is available via our podcast host, Anchor, and several other hosts, including Apple, Google, and Amazon. Please also check out our videos on the Fisher Poetry channel on YouTube and visit the Fisher Poetry Podcast page on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Come all young sailormen, listen to me I'll sing you a song of the fish in the sea Blow ye winds westerly, westerly blow We're bound to the southern, so steady she goes